is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome, welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guests say that if you do not understand your dreams, you will miss much of your destiny for the last days. But if you're like me, uh, I have these symbol books of dreams, these big books with symbols, and, uh, and I'm just too practical. If I can't understand it, I'm going to toss it out. But it's so simple, they teach children how to understand their dreams, and this is what they say. They say everyone can understand their dreams. Everyone has dreams. And God is going to speak things to you you'll never get in your natural mind. You will hear God better than you have before. Do you want to learn? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Well, Mark, uh, our producers are so excited about your understanding of how we can understand dreams and visions, uh, you say that our dreams are absolutely the easiest way we can hear from God. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because dreams come from our heart, and um, thinking comes from our head. And when we go to sleep at night, our heart stays awake, and our heart communicates to us without having to go through the bottleneck of our brain. And Jesus lives in our heart. When I got saved, I invited Jesus into my heart. So now we have heart-to-heart -heart communication without my brain muddling up the works. So dreams is, are simple, they're easy, um, they bypass the mind, they give me direct revelation, spirit to spirit, heart to heart. Well, Charity, why are dreams so important? Dreams are so important because God says they are. And, and well, that should be good enough. <laughs> exactly. Over and over in the Bible, he says he'll reveal himself to us in visions. He'll speak to us in dreams. And he says that he'll open our ears and seal our instruction and turn us from wrongdoing and keep us from pride. And, and I love what it says in Song of Solomon. It, it talks about how dreams are actually God's contingency plan um, because it says that when we're asleep, our heart is awake to commune with our beloved. So when our mind shuts down, that we have kind of deified and put in place of God, when that thing rests at night, we go to our hearts, and that's where God lives. Ephesians 3.17, God lives in our hearts, so we want to live out of our hearts as well. And we commune with our beloved, and he speaks to us wonderful counsel and revelation every single night through our dreams. Now, Mark, what about someone that says, I don't have dreams or visions, that's just <laughs> not me. What would you say to them? I would say what they should be saying is I don't recall my dreams and visions because they do have dreams every single night. Everybody does, and they've proven that in sleep laboratories because in a sleep laboratory, they can watch and tell when you begin to dream because when you begin to dream, your eyes begin to flicker back and forth, mm -hmm. and it's called mm -hmm. REM sleep, R-E-M, rapid eye movement. And if they wake a person up, whenever they see their eyes begin to move and don't let them dream, after three days, they're going to enter into a nervous breakdown, which shows mm. how important and central dreams are for our emotional well-being. Now, most people that teach on dreams have a big book on symbols, and all you do is look in the book for your symbol, but you don't go along with that. Why? You're right. Uh, people who have, they have kind of complained to, to us and told us, you know, we, we try to do that. We want to make sense of our dreams and we jump online or we look at the dream symbol dictionary and we feel more confused at the end, you know, after we looked it up. They're like, this doesn't make sense. This yeah. doesn't feel right. And so they're like, ah, dream interpretation, this is crazy. But the, the dream symbol dictionaries, they do not take into account 
your own personal experiences, your own unique perceptions, your own uh, individual um, perspective on things. For example, like if I dream of a, a dog and I love dogs, that's, that's great. But if you dream of a dog and you were viciously attacked by a dog, well, that's going to say two totally different things right. depending on who is dreaming it. And, and, and you know what I found? When I talk to these dream experts, so to speak, and I give them my dreams, each one gives me a different interpretation. So what I did, Mark, was I just tossed the whole thing <laughs> out except for literal dreams. Uh -huh. And I do get a little dreams, but they're very infrequent. Most of my dreams are the way most of your dreams are. But I'm never I'm never gonna throw out God speaking to me again. And it you make it so simple. Have you heard that before from others, Charity? Definitely. We've tried to. If to enter the kingdom of heaven, you have to be like a little child. So if we complicate this more than something a little kid can do, then we've made it too hard. Now, I've read a scripture that says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Did you know that God is in a wealth transfer right now? And he wants to speak to you through dreams and visions. Uh, and when we come back, I'm going to ask Dr. Mark to tell us some famous things that have been developed through dreams and visions, but you can get wisdom, you can get solutions to family problems, uh, you, you can uh, get business ideas. I mean, let's face it, if every night you could hear from God, it would be heaven on earth. We'll be right back. <laughs> Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. I was healed yesterday during the worship on the Roy Fields show. I had problems for years with arthritis and pain in my right knee, and my knee was healed instantly. I felt the power of the Lord go down my spine. My son remarked, Mom, you're standing taller. I thank God for your program. I recorded the show with Graham Walsh and watched it Friday night. I woke up Saturday morning to find that a small but irritating growth that was inside my eyelid was completely gone. Glory to God! I just watched the show again and I'm believing God to heal neck pain from a car accident years ago. Thank you, Sid, for allowing the Holy Spirit to have His way on your show. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org forward slash praise. Our world is rife with comparisons about what separates us. Day after day, we go about our lives with tunnel vision. But scripture tells us how Messiah broke down the wall between Jew and Gentile, allowing for the creation of one new man, one new humanity. This spiritual completeness is set to usher in the greatest move toward God the world has ever known. Sid Roth has discovered Scripture's key to reaching the Jewish people with God's love. One New Humanity opens the door for God to move in signs and wonders, and all will see the evidence of the invisible God promised in Scripture. At SidRoth.org, you'll find mentoring tools to empower you to share how One New Humanity is critical to bringing multitudes to know God. You'll understand Israel and the Jewish roots of the church and how all the nations of the earth will experience blessings unseen in human history. Log on to SidRoth.org today and learn how one new man is the key to unlocking God's greatest blessings. If you love watching our It's Supernatural TV program, you can now watch hundreds of archive programs online, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on your computer, your smartphone, your iPad, or your favorite tablet. ISN will be the vehicle to equip you to being normal. Normal as defined by the Bible. Just log on to SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. Now, Dr. Charity, uh, you, you teach that we are the best people to interpret our own dreams. We don't have to go to the experts. We have the expert inside of us. His name, Holy Spirit. Explain. The dreamer themselves is the most uh, qualified interpretation expert of their dream because they know what the symbols mean to them better than anyone. You know your association with whatever person or event or thing. But number two, you know the setting of the dream better than anyone. You as the dreamer know that. The setting is what is going on in your waking life when you had the dream. 
Setting is everything. We don't know anything about a dream until we know the setting. So with every dream that we have, we wanna go back to our waking life and say, what happened that day? You know, what was I thinking about as I got ready for bed? What was I praying for as I fell asleep? It's almost like a light bulb goes off. Yes, you have an aha moment. The interpretation needs to resonate in the heart of the dreamer, and then you know you have the right message. It just clicks. Now, Dr. Mark, uh, tell me some famous inventions. <laughs> and, and by the way, you're saying, oh, I couldn't come up with an invention. Do you think God could? Does God have any problem? He's just looking for someone to use. Just volunteer. Say what Abraham said. Here am I, God. Tell me some famous inventions. Yeah, and does God even care about famous inventions, or does he just care about your spiritual life, or is inventions part of it all? And it is. Let me tell you about uh, Larry Page. He was at Stanford University, 22 years of age, and he had a dream at night. And in this dream, he sees himself downloading the entire internet onto his personal computer, and he sees some algorithms that are connecting all the different articles, and those that's like computer code, and it's showing how he's able to access and pull these articles down. He wakes up in the middle of the night. He spends two hours writing out what he can recall from that dream of these different rules as to how to connect these articles and pull them down. That became, and he took professor. it to his professor at college and told him he was going to create this in a couple of weeks, and his professor laughed at him. It took him a year of working this dream out. But a year later, he I had he had the Google uh, search bar, which we now all use, which has become the foundation of Google Enterprises, which has made that the biggest, richest company in the world today, mm -hmm. and made, made the founder of it, Larry Page, the, the, one of the richest men in the world today, because he listened to a dream, honored the dream, got up and spent two hours writing about it, spent a year working it out, and now he's blessed the world with a gift that we all use every single day of our lives, and he's become wealthy as a result of that. Tell me one more. <laughs> well, I mean, there's so many. I mean, wasn't it Thomas Edison that used to take a nap every day and God would show him inventions? Yes, and almost every single inventor has done that. Hmm. And the gentleman who came up with the uh, sewing machine, uh, uh, he couldn't figure out, when he patented the first sewing machine, mm -hmm. he couldn't figure out how to thread the thread in the end of the needle. And he goes to sleep with that question on his mind. And he has a dream of an arrow being shot through a wigwam wall, snaring a thread on the inside of the wall and pulling it back to the wall. He said, that's the way to hook the thread to the end of this needle. And he patented it. And he became very, very wealthy. So there's another example from recent history. Now, Mark, what would you say to the person that's listening to us right now and say, but Dr. Mark, I, I believe everything you're saying, but I don't remember one of my dreams. <laughs> Well, that's really, really simple to, to, to resolve. All you simply have to do is as you lay there in bed at night, say, Holy Spirit, would you give me a dream tonight? Say, I believe in dreams. I believe in my heart. I believe my heart wants to com communicate with me revelation. And Lord, I'm asking you to give me revelation in this area that I'm exploring right now. Because you've asked me to explore it, and you have wonderful answers. You go to sleep asking that. And you wake up, and you put paper and pencil next to your bed, saying to your heart, if you wake me up, I'll write down what you give me. If you do that, I guarantee you, you're going to wake up every week with wonderful stuff to write down. You know what I found out in your teaching? Most people are like me, and they just, I'm so pragmatic. If I can't understand my dream, I don't want to even waste my time fooling with it. <laughs> but then what I was thinking from your teaching is there was no expectancy. And I got what I expected. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Right. How important is it to believe you're going to have this? According to your faith, be it unto you. Ask and you'll receive. So if I'm not going to believe in dreams and I'm not going to ask for dreams, then the Bible is clear to say I'm going to get nothing. Because he who comes to God must believe that he is. And he's a rewarder of those who seek him. And if I say, no, I don't really know if I believe in dreams. Well, you're not believing in God speaking from your heart. So you're getting nothing. You have to take a step of faith and say, look, the Bible covers dreams. I believe in dreams. I believe in the Bible. I'm going to practice living in dreams. It's as simple as that. Now, also, we're living in a very complex world today. What if God knows what's going to happen today? And he can warn you. Give me an example of a warning dream. A warning dream. I was on the phone with a lady who was phoning me from prison. And um, 
she had a warning dream before she even got saved from God, which shows God's tremendous love for every single person. And she was a teenager thinking of going from uh, Utah or Nevada over to California. Mm -hmm. In the dream, the warning was, don't go to California. If you do, you're going to go to prison. She ignored the warning. She went to California. She got involved in the drug scene. And in a drug-induced in stupor, she killed her roommate. And she's now spending a life prison sentence in a Calif California prison, which she wouldn't have had to do had she honored the voice of God through her dream and the warning of God through her dream. Charity, you have so opened up my thinking to children. Children have an advantage over people like me. Children have an advantage over everyone in dreaming, and we just totally dismiss this. What would happen if you taught your children that God speaks through dreams? What would happen if your children start telling you what God has in store for them? Uh, it, it just it, it just expanding my thinking so much when we come back I want to find charity what you found out and, and you have a degree in biblical studies we'll come right back right back to its supernatural Turn to It's Supernatural. Okay, I, I've been waiting for you to share this, Dr. Charity. Uh, I, I think it must be a degree of a passion with you. Children, just physiologically, are better adapted to get dreams than us adults. Explain. You're right. They are very sensitive to the supernatural world. They're very sensitive to the spirit because of their brainwave state. Um, adults, right now, we're in beta. It's like in a faster, logical, analytical brainwave Absolutely. state. Absolutely. That's where I am. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's alpha. And alpha is lo um, a slower, more meditative, kind of prayerful brainwave state. And when we dream, we're in alpha. And just as we're falling asleep at night and just as we're waking up in the morning, that's alpha. When we're not really sure if we're awake or asleep mm -hmm. and the, the veil between the physical and the spiritual is very thin, that's alpha. Well, the incredible thing that science has found about children is that they live continually, day and night, in the alpha brainwave state up until about seven years of age. Mm. So they're not living logically and analytically out of their head. They're living out of their heart, which... I would rather do that myself. <laughs> you're right. They're living out 2 Corinthians 4.18. You know, they're living to an unseen realm. They're living to an inner kingdom. And so we know God lives in our hearts. We all want to live out of our hearts. And that makes us very sensitive to the supernatural realm that infuses and permeates this natural I, you realm. You know, maybe that's why so many children love our show. I'm amazed. At, I mean, even at young ages, they're attracted to its supernatural. Absolutely. They see into the spirit. They hear they are, they are young seers. They are very gifted in the, in the prophetic. You're right. Now, you teach uh, simple keys to understanding of dreams, uh, and the keys work for children, but they also work for all of us. Tell us a few of the keys. Yes, there's three specific questions that we want to ask about every single dream we have. Number one, we want to ask, what is the setting? And we talked about, you know, what's going on in our waking life when we have the dream. And then number two, we want to ask, what is the main action of the dream? In the dream, what am I doing? Am I running? Am I hiding? Am I ministering? That's the key action. Then the third question we want to ask about every dream is, in the dream, how am I feeling? Am I excited? Am I scared? Am I disappointed? Grateful? That's the key emotion. And then we take the key emotion and action from the dream and we look in our waking life and we match it up. Where in waking life am I feeling that emotion? Where am I doing this? And then experiencing these things. And then we overlay our waking life world setting on top of the dream. We see where it matches up. Then we know what area of our life the dream is speaking to. You know, for example, I can share a dream and it seems silly. It seems like, oh, that's just a pizza dream, but there's a really 
there's a message in it from God. Um, I, had, I had a dream where I was on a pole vaulting team. All the people on the team, my team. I'd say if I'd had a dream like that, I'd say, but God, don't you know I'm not an athlete? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But then we know to translate, we need to look at it picture, symbolically, figuratively. It's all in pictures. So, okay. So everyone on the team was able to pole vault except for me. I was too weak and I was too sick and I couldn't uh, get over the high bar. So what's the main action in this dream? Well, I'm trying to get over something and the feeling is I'm struggling because I can't do it. So where in waking life am I struggling to get over something? Well, in waking life, I'd actually been talking to God about someone who had said something to me and I was a little bit offended. I'm like, God, should I confront them? Should I tell them they, you know, they hurt my feelings or should I just forgive them, you know, walk in love and let it go, just get over it. Well, God gave me this picture at night showing me, hey, Everyone who is else who was on your team, they were able to get over it. If you're spiritually strong, if you're a spiritually healthy person, you should have no trouble getting over. Pole vaulting was the picture, but getting over what was the problem. So by looking at what's going on in our waking life and matching it up with the dream, we're able to see kind of what God is speaking to. You know, another clue that you gave me is that when you have multiple dreams in a night, most likely they're all telling you the same thing. Absolutely. That's how it was for Pharaoh, right? In the book of Genesis. Right. Yeah. He dreams of corn on the cob, and then he's dreaming of the fat cows, and that seems unrelated, totally. They have nothing to do with each other. But Joseph's like, oh, hey, that's, that's one and the same message. That's all talking about the same famine that's going to happen. So when we have lots of different dreams, they might seem unrelated, but in one night, God is usually speaking to a single heart issue. And he's just showing us at different angles, different perspectives, so that we can just, we can get the message. He's showing us all different perspectives to communicate the message and meaning he has for us. Mark, you, you say very strongly uh, we should write down our dreams. Uh, when do we write them down? When we have them and wake up? Or do we write them down first thing after we finished our sleep for the night? What do you recommend? You do it as soon as you wake up. Uh, so if you wake up in the middle of the night, 2 o'clock with a dream, you write it down at 2 o'clock because chances are you'll have forgotten most of your dreams by the time you wake up in the morning. And so you write the dream down as soon as you receive it. Um, God loves you to write things down because you're, you're honoring your heart. You're saying to your heart, you're important. You wake me up and I'll record what you give me. So your heart says, great, I'm going to wake you up because you now honor me. And it's a way of memorializing it. It's a way of extending it. Uh, because as you begin to write, the flow gives you pieces that you forgot about, and you think, oh, yeah, there was that. that that's what I've noticed. Right. In, in other words, it's almost like the Holy Spirit will bring the recall when you have the <laughs> intent, I want to know what you told me. Yeah. Last minute, would you pray for us? Would you pray that everyone watching have sweet street, uh, sleep, uh, and there are people with sleep problems, Amen. and remember our dreams? Amen. Be glad to. So right now, Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, and Father, we just release uh, sweet sleep and dreams into the heart of every single listener here today. And we speak to your heart, and we say, be at peace as you fall asleep. Uh, give your care to the Lord Jesus Christ and receive s sweet rest, deep rest from the Holy Spirit. And we speak to your heart for faith to arise within your heart, that, that, you, that you will have the gift of faith to believe that dreams are the language of the Holy Spirit and God is speaking directly into your heart. So I speak faith into your heart right now to believe in the value of dreams and it's God speaking to you through those dreams. So Father, we receive those gifts right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for them. We bless you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. God says that he gives his beloved sweet sleep. The question is, are you his beloved? If Jesus is your Lord, if you believe Jesus forgave you of your sins and you say it out loud and you ask Jesus to live inside of you, I'm going to tell you something. You, and I want this to go deep inside of you, you are the beloved of God. You really are. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. My left leg had started going into spasms, and I had constant pain in that leg. The pain would often persist through the night. Upon awakening, the pain would shoot down my leg and nothing, nothing seemed to help it. 
I turned on your program with Craig Hill and I joined him in a prayer of repentance over the curses and for judging my parents. The pain immediately lifted. Thank you, God. I was afraid of the supernatural until I started watching your TV program and since doing your mentoring study guide and DVD. Now the fear has gone and I do believe I have received an impartation from God. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org forward slash praise. Next week on It's Supernatural. My guest was a paramedic in an ambulance. And one day, God speaks to him and says, I want you to pray for the sick in the ambulance. And he doesn't even believe in healing. But it's God. So he starts praying. He gets something like 80% of the people healed now. Anyone interested in those results? Yeah.